This is a second example to clarify the concepts about synthesis based design. I give another example. And so I will explain the case, requirements as problem analysis, domain analysis. You will see that it's just a similar process. This has been done together with Siemens, Siemens Nixdorf. Uh, the project here was to design atomic transaction system architecture for a car dealer system. This was the, the general architecture. In, in this case, so it's about a car dealer uh, information system, different dealers from different uh, uh, car companies cooperate together. Each dealer has its own local area network. Typically, it's based on client-server paradigm. So you have one server, <coughs> multiple PC workstations. Every dealer has some layering. So you have, in which you have different services, accounting, new and used car management, stock management, workshop and order processing. Dealers can have sub-dealers which are connected through the net and can also be connected to external parties like manufacturers, lease companies, external service registration and tax organizations. So the overall problem was this. So how to design, develop such a, a, a car dealer system, which was supposed to be f f to work together with different uh, car companies. Our focus here was, so actually the dealer, so this is the one node of the of a dealer consisting of several services, but the focus here was basically on the system layer. So you have a system layer and, and above you have application layer and other subsystems which provide services to the application layer and the focus in particular in our case was to design a transaction subsystem. So it's a so that's the, the scope. That's the focus. The overall system is larger, but for designing the the the, uh, the system layer, we focused on one part even. Okay. So how do we design a transaction system? For that, what is a transaction system? Anybody knows? Yeah, atomic transactions. Perhaps you have, uh, this has been discussed in database courses. So let me first explain this concept. It's about car reservation applications. It's very simple. Imagine you have such a program. If car is available, then reserve the car. But there are multiple uh, entities, processes, which try to reserve the car. A car. So, it could happen that these two processes, I should be careful here, that they work in parallel. So they both check whether the car is available. The state is available here, it's free, it's not reserved. And then they reserve the car. Okay. So in the system actually this car will be reserved, the same car will be reserved by both dealers, dealer one and dealer two which is of course not possible. Okay. We say here it's inconsistency through concurrent access. Because of concurrency, you get an inconsistency. Inconsistency here is like, the requirement is like, no, a car can only be reserved by one dealer, not two or, or more. Okay. So there's some consistency violation because of concurrency. Consistency violation can also occur because of failures. Imagine we have this program where you withdraw some money from one account and you store it in on another account. So you withdraw just while this process is, is running. 
and you are just going to you withdraw 100 from account one and you just as when you are trying to store this to account two a failure happens and you, you are not able to store the, the money to account two so where's the money okay you get inconsistency through fails again a consistency violation in the system so consistency can be violated through both concurrency but also through failures what you can do is in a very naive approach would be just try to program uh, define a program which copes with this concurrency where you just uh, lock some entities okay uh, where you have some uh, logging where you can recover from from uh, from crashes etc but actually you, you don't do that because we have the, the, the notion of atomic transactions a transaction is actually a programming abstraction which has also impact on the infrastructure actually but let's look at programming abstraction what does it mean it provides some additional keywords to you to state that your program should be processed in a transactional manner and that is atomic you will see these are the typical keywords start transaction where you start a transaction commit and where you show whether the program has completed uh, successfully or abort if the program has not uh, terminated successfully you abort so taking the or example program if car is free then car reserve then typically we can use such such a transaction so this should be uh, embedded in a transaction which means so start transaction and transaction if car is free then reserved car else abort okay. by doing this so the system provides that to you you don't need to write concurrency code or recovery code okay so it's transparent this the system it provides a transaction behavior for you which means it, it, it copes with concurrency, it can cope with recovery so you can have different programs embedded in the keyword begin transaction add which can use the, the system which provides transactional properties which provides concurrency transparency and, and failure transparency which means you are, you are not aware whether you are dealing with concurrent access or not you have just just one transaction and if you perform this transaction you are sure that there will be no inconsistencies no inconsistencies due to concurrent access or due to failures that is all done for you by a transaction system the transaction system provides as we say serializability and indivisibility so it considers your program as one atomic unit either it completes totally or, or it, the effect is completely undone that's a transaction system there are different transaction implementations also in the literature and each of these transactions can use different transaction implementation techniques can use and also might require different transaction implementation techniques due to their behavior right so some program might require two-phase locking protocol another one timestamp ordering these are example implementation techniques another one optimistic etc okay, that's the second there's no single transaction implementation there are multiple protocols 
Well, the problem statement here was in this project, we have a car dealer system, many processes going ongoing, failures can happen and will happen, so we need to design a transaction architecture for a car dealer system. Not the car dealer itself, it was already designed, but the transaction architecture, transaction this, uh, for transaction system, which should support the whole car dealer system. There are specific requirements. Was adaptable. There's no single uh, implementation, but the system had to be adaptable to different transaction protocols and optimize itself based on system characters, based on the application semantics, different applications that we have in the system. It should be able to define specific transaction protocols. Also based on the system throughput, uh, system conditions like throughput response time. If throughput goes up, we should be able to switch to another more effective transaction implementation. Based on data semantics, if you have very large uh, objects, you should, you should provide the, the required uh, transaction semantics, the required uh, recovery protocols and scheduling protocols. So it's a system, so because you have multiple car dealers, multiple clients, different transaction requirements, you should be able to meet their requirements to define specific transaction implementations, plus you should be able to, to, to adapt this at runtime, the protocols. And third is reuse. Okay, of course, uh, there are multiple clients, it's a huge organization. You want just to have one transaction system architecture, and this should be reused by the different partners. Okay. This was the problem. This is a real industrial uh, project that we worked on. And actually, uh, there we also designed, defined the synthesis-based, defined and applied the synthesis-based architecture design process, which I said is, is one example of a domain-driven architecture design. Domain-driven means that it includes an explicit solution domain analysis process. In our case, we had also problem analysis, alternative space analysis. So we applied this here. Requirements analysis, I will not elaborate that much on, on, on this. Also, I, I will not elaborate on the concept of transaction mechanism. It's quite actually broad, quite detailed, but this I just explained the, the, the key, key notions for, for the key understanding. The requirements analysis. Try to understand from, from a stakeholder's perspective Textual requirements, use case scenarios, prototypes, state transition diagrams are the mechanisms that we can use. This is a use case uh, model, just one simple use case model. You have application user which can use the, the keyword start transaction, commit transaction, award transaction. They are the use cases here. And can also set the transaction properties and indicate what kind of transaction semantics is needed, aggressive logging or optimistic uh, 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 scheduling. Adaptation protocol is another use case of the system administrator. Should be able to initiate the policy for dynamically changing the transaction properties should be able to insert criteria, remove criteria, update criteria, etc. So at some time, in, so the, uh, somebody should be able to observe the system and change the transaction properties. Why? To optimize the system performance, for example. Several scenarios here, so apply 
fixed concurrency control that puts one scenario. Apply dynamic concurrency control algorithms. Invoke long transactions. Invoke nested transactions. Adapt transaction protocol based on throughput. Adapt transaction protocol based on type of data, etc. We can define a list of scenarios here. Sorry. So requirements are actually could more elaborate, we could um, uh, explain that. Requirements as, as we said, architectural drivers is key. Architectural drivers. Next process, technical problem analysis. We have looked at this is the process, requirements, technical problem analysis. And here we use this. We try to look at the, at the requirements, try to get the stakeholder problems, try to get the domain problems, look at the quality problems. Stakeholders, domain problems and quality problems. Domain, based on application, computer science, mathematics. And based on that, we define this again a, a problem. Three, top level, define an adaptable transaction architecture. Uh, it appeared that we needed four top-level problems. How to define a transparent concurrency control mechanism. How to define transparent recovery. How to define transaction management. How to adapt transaction protocols. Adaptability here is typically a quality concern. It was not just the, uh, not a, an ordinary transaction system, but it should be a transaction system which should be adaptable. Concurrence control, we could identify different uh, uh, concurrence control algorithms here as we will see later on. The same for these. Climate analysis, problem analysis, next is domain analysis. This was the process, identify domains, based on domains identify knowledge sources, extract domain concepts, structure the solution domain concepts. Like we did in the PSC, we have to, we will look at the uh, domains. So once we have identified what the problem is, we identify the domains, the related domains. And based on the related uh, so the, the problems, we identified the related domains. So this is the, the problem and it appears that we needed these four domains. Transaction management, it, it is a domain by itself. You, you, you can find the literature, knowledge source for this. Concurrence control, it's a huge uh, set of knowledge sources. Recovery, adaptability. The domain transaction processing, the overall, we identify these kind of knowledge sources, concurrency control and recovery and database systems. It appeared that this was a very useful knowledge source. It was a textbook. Atomic transactions. So just this from a textbook. We have to define transaction systems, so we don't do by just a fully requirements driven, would be just try to define the from the requirements, but it's not there. So we look at the knowledge source, atomic transaction domain, database transaction models, the design and implementation of the distributed transaction system based on atomic data types. It's a journal paper but was very relevant for, for our purposes. We used it to also design the system. Again, textbook, uh, so, so basically textbooks on on transaction system, which explain the mechanism of, of transactions in general. Of course, so we do the problem analysis, domain analysis. It's not like a, a sequential waterfall process. Okay. So we start with the problem analysis. 
uh, but you can know the problems only actually also if you study the domains. So you can state better problems if you know the domain better. So actually we start with the initial set of problems. We do domain analysis afterwards. In domain during domain analysis process, we can better grasp the problems. So we go back to the problem set. There are a set of iterations here. Right? Then what we saw, our commonality analysis here relates, so we have the known sources, we do again the commonality analysis, try to identify the common concepts. In our case, what's the commonality analysis here? So domain, transaction domain, we have 10 knowledge sources, we just scan through these, and it, it appears that these are the common concepts, transaction, represents a transaction block as defined by a programmer. This is in every uh, knowledge source. Transaction manager. There's every knowledge source talks about the concept of transaction manager. It's the concepts which provides the operation actually start operation abort commit. Data manager. This was a recurring concepts and these knowledge sources. Commonality, as you see. Just scan through all these knowledge sources and we get this list. Recovery managers, uh, policy manager, was required for adaptability. Recovery manager, scheduler. So in order to have a transaction systems, transaction system, we have to include these concepts. And these concepts cannot be easily derived from the requirements. We define what, this is a glossary. We define what transaction system is. We provide the glossary. And what appears, so uh, we just follow this process, what is in the literature, in the, in the knowledge sources. I give a summary now. The transaction manager provides transaction operations for the application which accesses the objects. This can just be found in all these knowledge sources. The mechanism is like that. So we have transaction application, atomic object, transaction a a uh, application accesses the object which we call atomic object. The transaction application Provides transaction operations. So this is the relation. Transaction manager manages transaction application. Application access the object. See? This was for car reserve. If car is free, then reserve. And this provides start, commit, abort. So this is now an explicit concept. Each ad atomic object is managed by a data manager which ensures that the object is accessed in a consistent way. For this it uses scheduling and recovery mechanisms. This is a summary again from the domain knowledge. We have atomic object. Each atomic object is managed by a data manager. So we derive this from domain, solution domain. The data manager, to access the atomic object, you have to go through the data manager. And data manager uses scheduling and recovery mechanisms. Okay. Reserve car. This, this is the car object. Here is checks. Are you allowed to do this reserve operation? So there's some scheduling. If there's some failure, the data manager should be able to undo or redo. I could not derive this from just requirements. It's not possible. Not possible. Use case driven approach requires it's, it's not possible. So 
So here you just need domain driven approach. Oops. The transaction protocols need to be dynamically adaptable. This was a, a specific requirement in this project. It was not in the domain of transactions. Well, partially we could find, we could find some papers. But we had to, for this, we had to add a, a, a concept called policy management. Policy management will coordinate also the actions between transaction management and data management. Policy manager is a concept. The, the entity responsible for dynamically changing the transaction protocols that coordinates the transaction manager and the data manager. This is the relation. Now, this all together provides us the top level architecture for transaction systems. Transaction manager manages the transaction application. Transaction application accesses the atomic object. Atomic object is managed by data manager. It uses scheduling and recovery protocols. And there's an, an entity, policy manager, which manages these two, transaction manager and data manager, to dynamically switch between these transaction properties. So how, how, what's the dynamic behavior here? We start transaction application. Embed it in, in, a, uh, in a begin transaction, end transaction, or start transaction, whatever. Goes to transaction manager. Then, then this is forward to policy manager. It determines the policy, determines what kind of transaction semantics to use, what kind of scheduling algorithm, what kind of recovery algorithm to use. This forward to data manager, gets a request and then it checks whether it's possible. So it, it submits to scheduler, which, is, which defines the concurrency mechanism, concurrency control mechanism, so synchronization. And it checks the uh, recovery measure, whether failure has occurred should be log, how to log, undo so checkpointing, all these issues. Once it's okay, the atomic object is accessed. Read update. So we derive this just from the domain. And transaction system was 10 years like this. Maybe 20 years like this, and 10 years after this will be also the same. Probably. Why? Because it doesn't change abruptly. Every transaction system will have a transaction manager, data manager, scheduling, recovery. They do not change abruptly. And since our architecture will be based on this, our architecture will be stable. The domain can change. How can it change? You could have new concurrency control algorithms. You could have new recovery algorithms, right? But the overall concepts and the overall structure doesn't change abruptly. It doesn't change every month. Okay. Well, this is it, the uh, transaction architecture. We can, we said, we can also refine each concept. For that, we just take one concept. Transaction manager, for example, and then try to refine. Let's look at that, how we refine. It's just the same process, transaction management. That's, this was this is the overall structure, top level de synthesis. How to design an architecture? Well, this is the architectural design. Then we look at the specific concepts. How to design transaction management? How to design scheduling? We apply the same concepts. We try to identify the problems, 
try to identify the rela related domains, known as sources, extract the concepts. Well, for the different uh, concepts, we could indeed identify specific solution domains, for example, transaction management, domain of commits, board protocols, transaction structuring and specification, control systems, or data management, consistency, constraint management, coordination protocols, control systems, scheduling, concurrence control, deadlock detection, and etc. Let's look at the concrete example. We have the top level architecture, transaction system, that's clear, because we have also checked it with each node source, it, it's just like that. And now we take one co component of it, transaction manager, and try to refine that. Again, from the literature, I just, from the node source, I can provide the summary. Each transaction manager uses an initiation protocol, an abort protocol, and a commit protocol. And this becomes the structure of transaction management. It uses initiation protocol, commit protocol, and board protocol. Transaction may be nested. There's a huge domain on nested transactions. Well, several textbooks just explaining this. We didn't need, need these, these knowledge sources to design the top-level architecture, but we needed these to design the Transaction management. Transaction management can be nested, which means it can have uh, children. Uh, so we have a parent transaction manager, has child transaction manager, and they are both actually transaction managers. A parent transaction manager has a child management because it appears that we have the notion of open nested transactions and closed nested transactions. I cannot know this during the requirements, sense, but I, we, we could only know when we studied these. Okay? Closed tra uh, nested transactions, openness. What does it mean? In open nested transactions, the sub-transactions, the, the children, may commit independently from the parent. In closed, they may only commit if the parent allows. There's a specific knowledge, but it was important for designing this the transaction management design. Child management and child authority. That defines the structure. The properties of transaction must be able to vary at runtime. So for that, we had to include one uh, component. So like we have the top-level architecture, we took one transaction and applied the same process. Then this became the, the structure of the transaction manager. It uses initiation protocol, commit protocol, abort protocol. Can be nested. This leads to these concepts. So you have parent transaction manager, child transaction manager, you have child management, child authority, and can be ab adapted transaction property controller. See? So what's the mechanism here? So you have a start transaction, then can you initiate the protocol? You, so you start, you get the timestamp, for example. Once in the, if the application commits, so it goes to transaction manager and it applies commit protocol. If it's a nested transaction, if it's a nested transaction, the child authority is checked. Okay. The similar case, abort transaction manager, abort protocol will be executed. Again, the child authority will be checked. Okay. So we can also initiate the uh, change the initiation protocol. How? Through this concept, change initiation protocol goes to transaction manager, and this is changed. 
Okay, how to initiate the translation. Change commit protocol. There are different commit protocols in the literature. So you, the system should be adaptable. So this is the, the, the impact. So we have an additional transaction property component. Change commit protocol. Then we go, we change it here. Similar sense, we can change the abort protocol. A dynamically adaptable transaction system. The transaction system architecture is stable. Why? Because it's based on the solution domain, which is itself stable. And it is adaptable because so we, we, of this pr property here, basically. This was just an example. We can do the same for the other components, like scheduler. I, let me go very quickly through that. Uh, for the scheduler, it appears we identified the, these knowledge sources. Typically, just knowledge source, not for the, for the overall overall domain, but just for concurrence control. Concurrence control in advanced database applications and distributed systems, theory of database concurrence control, etc. So we, we look at the knowledge sources of, of concurrency control. Then, okay, we get the same structure. It appears that each scheduler either accepts, delays, or rejects an operation. For that, it uses some synchronization decision. So it has accept handle, reject handle, and delay handle. This is a, the structure of a, of a scheduler as defined also in the knowledge sources. You get operation, it uses the synchronization decides whether to accept or reject, reject or delay an operation. So by using this, Accepting, rejecting, or delaying, it can implement concurrency control. So you could have different uh, algorithms for synchronization decision. Could be based on synchronization graph testing, locking, time step, or optimistic control. They are all derived from the domain. It's, this is just possible through a domain-driven design. Each scheduler must also support the commit and abort protocol. So fast. Uh, in addition to local synchronization, each scheduler must take into account the global synchronization. So we had a data manager, atomic object. The data manager synchronizes the access to the atomic object, but they are working in, in, a, in a complex distributed system, so the, uh, it appears that the non-local uh, accesses can also have impact on consistency. For that, you have a global synchronization decision which looks at the systemic properties, uh, which, which looks at the, uh, the system from a, from a high level view, from a global view, not local. So it tries to ensure the global consistency constraints. Whatever it's, so we have a scheduler, use local synchronization decision, interacts with global decision. So you first decide in local and then you check whether it's also, the system is still consistent with respect to the global perspective. Uh, the choice of specific concurrence control techniques may have side effects on performance, for example, deadlock, permanent blocking, cyclic restarting, or infinite restarting. The schedule must cope with these performance failures. For that, the local synchronization decision will use a performance failure management and global performance failure management component. Well, this after a study through the concurrency control domain, we could derive the scheduler uh, component, a sub-architecture of the top-level transaction system. Synchro scheduler has synchronization decision. This can either accept, reject, or delay as a commit abort protocol. 
interacts with global synchronization decision and has performance failure management. This is just the state as defined by the domain. The same for recovery. I will go very quick through this. It appears so uh, just le let's look at this. Recovery manager uses logging techniques to, to anticipate on failures. It logs. It can log either operations or, or the images, the state. And in this case, it appears that you have two types, shadow logging or right ahead logging. And it can restart by doing undo or redo. And one important issue is to optimize restarting process. You put a very large transaction. It uses checkpointing. Checkpointing is preserving a consistent state now and then, regularly. So that if you have to undo, you just go to the last uh, consistent state, the checkpoint. Uh, I go through this. It appears that we have this uh, structure of the recovery manager. Okay. Recovery manager uses log management, can restart, or restarting can use redo, undo, checkpointing. It again uses abort commit protocol. It uh, uses logging. Logging can be operation logging, image logging, right ahead, or shadow logging. This follows again from the study to the specific uh, node no source of recovery. And this is for the uh, transaction policy measures. Transaction behavior is updated according to the condition of system. So we have policy manager controls system. And that has been defined as a controlled system. I think the idea is clear now. Uh, so we take, we first took look at the problem analysis, the domain analysis, identified the stable concept. For transaction system, it appears that we need a transaction, transaction management, data management, policy management. And also, we don't only derive the concepts from domain, but also the structure, the conceptual structure. So based on that, we could just define the transaction system architecture, the conceptual architecture, domain architecture. Then, we took each component, component separately, and designed their internal structure. The idea is, again, similar, based on the domain. So we have now seen two examples about the synthesis-based design process. Uh, I think the ID should be clear now. Any questions about this? Questions is clear? Clear? It's clear, huh? Clear. Okay, time to break.